Hello, ladies. Let me go ahead and welcome our guest, Natalie Carley. Now, Natalie Carley is the director of the Miss Voluptuous Pageant System. And what's so cool about this pageant system is that it's the first UK, United Kingdom based pageant that welcomes women that are plus sized. Now, many of you know that when you think about pageantry or when you tell someone you're competing in a pageant, oftentimes if they are not in the pageant industry, what's the first thing they think of? Up skinny, blonde, young, right? All the things that are like the Barbie type of pageant woman. But things are changing. And over the last 10 years, really, we have seen new pageants come up that welcome all types of body types. And the reason that I am so attracted to the Miss Voluptuous pageant is because it is actually very little to do with the body type and even more to do with the community service that's happening around the world as a result of what Natalie has done in only a few short years to get this pageant and to become an international pageant. Now she competed herself in a few international pageants. So when she created this pageant, she was like, all right, what are all the things a contestant would love? And it's so, it is so evident in the way that she runs her pageant that it truly is contestant facing. It's like, what does the contestant want out of this? She's brought in bomb sponsors like me. Hey, I love being a sponsor of Miss Voluptuous Pageant. Uh, she has done incredible work in bringing in the best and the brightest. And one of the cool things that she also offers that we're going to talk about today is the opportunity for women around the world to be a part of her franchise without a massive fee. So all of this is what we are going to be discussing today and so much more. Please welcome to the show, Natalie Carley. Natalie, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute joy, of course. Oh, good, good, good. Well, it was a pleasure to connect with you. Even over the last few years, you know, I've been watching your brand grow and grow online and even just seeing your pageant, which by the way, ladies, the, the pageant, the link to her pageant is in the description of this video. I highly recommend that you check it out because you will be blown away at the uniqueness of the brand, but also at the care in which is taken for this. And you know, pageantry is very much about marketing. You know, we want, as a pageant contestant, we're like, I wanna walk the red carpet. I wanna be seen and known and adored. And all of those things come back to because they're going to help us serve the community better. And we know that when we draw a spotlight to the pageant itself, it draws a spotlight to the platform. So let just in your own words, Natalie, if you could share a little bit about that first moment when you when you got the idea for this pageant, like what was that like for you? Take us back to that that time. I had, um, I had, like you said, I had competed a couple of times in some different pageants, and I'd I'd gone and had an international experience, which I really loved. And there was these things that I'd taken from each of those experiences, that, like the great parts, and I just wanted to create something that was specifically geared to people who look like me and who had body types like me and who for whatever reason haven't seen themselves represented on pageant stages before and to be fair like I'm kind of the smaller end of plus size and I knew that even myself I didn't feel like I could look at a pageant stage and see many people who looked like me. So it was a bit of a, a kind of conversation, a meeting of minds, if you will, between myself and a friend in the States where uh, they were talking about plus size pageantry in the US. And I was like, wow, you know, I wish we had something like that here in the UK, talking about um, systems that were very kind of celebratory of um, community service and volunteer work and all of that good stuff. And it just kind of, the seed was planted and it grew really fast um, much faster actually even than I could have anticipated because here we are that's so true and it was it just two years ago that this began or tell me tell me about how long ago was it was it when it first started and tell me a bit about so, the journey too because I know it's grown okay. fast it has grown fast so we we began a humble beginnings back in the UK. Um, we started putting on marketing out there in 2016 and we held our first final in the UK in 2017. We crowned one title holder. We grew in 2018 to two title holders um, for the UK and for a UK ambassador. So for the young woman or the, the woman who had um, raised the most amount of money for charity, because we felt that was really important to celebrate that as well. And then in 
2019, we crowned four title holders. Well, we all know what happened in 2020, um, but in 2020, we crowned uh, our first, in, at the end of 2020, sorry, we crowned our first title holders virtually. So we kind of innovated, worked around the pandemic a little bit. We came and did things virtually, and then we got our, our Team UK ready for the international. So that really came about at the beginning of 2020. I mean, what a time to plan an international pageant, right? <laughs> Um, at the beginning of 2020, I was like, okay, the world's ready to see what we have to offer. We'd had a lot of interest. People were getting in touch. Can I apply from this country? Can I represent, you know, this country? And and it really kind of got me thinking, okay, so what if this could be bigger? What if we could reach more people? What if we could impact more lives? What if we could create really the halfway point between a model and an influencer? And really my idea of an influencer is someone who uses the spotlight that's on them, like you said, to impact positive influence on others. And so the, this halfway point uh, between a model and an influencer and a, a general public speaker and a, an all round role model, what if we could take that out into the world? And so that little kids all over the world who have grown up and never seen themselves for whatever reason represented could have that. And here we are now, just two years later after that initial idea to go to international, here we are and we've already held our first uh, held our first final and it was incredible. And we've got two international title holders and three continental title holders and 21 queens in our class for 2023. So it's growing and it's exciting and it's been a complete whirlwind. And I have to pinch myself. <laughs> yes. Oh, it is so cool. And you know, growth like that, I I tell my clients and even the girls watching the, the jumpstart right now often that leadership trickles down. And so it's it is not a it is not by accident that something like this would grow very quickly. It actually requires phenomenal leadership and vision and direction. And you are at the helm of that. And so I commend you for the work that you've done to grow something as quickly as you really have and to manage people all around the world. I can only imagine like multiple time zones and like sending sashes and like all these things like to encourage the, the, the community aspect, but also to ensure that people have the proper information, you know, um, and your pageant, the international pageant was held in the U S last year will be again this coming year, actually in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is <laughs> nearby my hometown. I actually grew up about two hours North of Pittsburgh in a farm town there, Cochranton, Pennsylvania. My mom still lives there. So we go travel back there frequently to visit. So when I saw, Oh, Pittsburgh, I was like, Oh, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> so that's incredible that you tell me about the interest in hosting the pageant, the international pageant, you know, because you've got a lot of representatives throughout Great Britain, um, England, mm -hmm. Ireland, UK, those areas have to travel to the US. Tell me about the interest in that. Is that something that um, you know, you thought like, oh, this is going to be great because it'll give them a travel opportunity. Um, how did that come about? Everybody knows that the, the States is the pageant mecca of the world. It's where everybody wants to go. And pageantry, whilst it's not as well established in the UK as it is in other parts of the world, it doesn't have the following here as it does in other parts of the world. You know, we have incredible pageant fans in the Philippines and across Asia and across America as a continent. Um, it's not really, it hasn't quite gained the traction here yet, although we're working on it. That's definitely a personal goal of mine. Our dream as girls from the UK who compete in pageants is to compete in, in the States. That's like the big goal for us. And I think that everybody who enters a pageant here in the UK who wants to go to an international, they want that, that travel experience. And, you know, you guys have significantly better weather than we do. Um, it's it's just a whole different experience. And, you know, you can live in the United States and travel from one state to another and have an entirely different experience just from, from that short journey. Um, whereas, you know, if we go to a different place in the UK, it's kind of same, same because the UK is a great country, but it's very small. And just having those opportunities for travel I think, and opening those doors to state title holders as well. It really makes it a much more accessible program to include more people. And that really is my ultimate goal is that I get to work with even more incredible women that inspire me every day. And that really is the driving force behind this. Yeah, 
That's so cool. I, I recently interacted with Amanda Sweet, who's your USA title holder, um, America. And oh man, yep. this girl's cool. Like I started like checking her out on social media and I was like, wow, she's like a great speaker. She's such a positive representative and just doing such a phenomenal job. And so it is fun, the like what you said about how these girls really do, they truly are an inspiration. When it's, <laughs> as a director, you know, and even as a coach, we have moments where we are kind of like avoiding the, uh, not on purpose, but just we don't have to have the interview experience. Yeah. Like we don't have to be like <gasps> the vulnerability and the heart beating and the, all the things and practice. <laughs> and then three minutes later, it's like, boom. And so when we got on this experience today, I you, you said, yeah. oh my gosh, I feel like I'm doing the interview. And I thought <laughs> this is such yeah. a good, you know, when people like you and myself, if we are not often putting ourselves in these types of experiences, yeah. it's so easy to forget how mm -hmm. how much work goes into the not just the preparation for the interview experience but all of the mindset behind it all of the mm -hmm. emotional work that goes into the preparation of it and the aftermath of it right and mm -hmm. you know you've had pageant experience so you understand that in the end mm -hmm. it is going to be just fine and that people really are rooting for you and everybody's human and a flag runs by you and it's like that's totally <laughs> normal these things happen right um, and yeah. so then, then you can make the most of it, but it's great to be able to, you know, talk with somebody else who's in it, who's doing it, who's building the thing, who's doing the mm -hmm. work, who's, and you know that your contestants are doing all of that as well. So mm -hmm. I want to chat a bit about Natalie, because you have some event management background, mm -hmm. um, some experience yeah. in event management. And so I'm wondering, mm -hmm. Because I, I imagine that as an event manager, you probably have an eye for detail and organization, but also for the wow factor. And so I'm wondering how you weave those things into the pageant experience that you create for your contestants. Well, so it's like you say, I started with this event management experience and I spent three years as a wedding planner and wedding planning is all about the the small details and knowing that actually you're being trusted with what's essentially the biggest day of someone's life. And it's funny because a lot of people who are preparing for a pageant that, that have gotten married, they're like, this feels like I'm preparing for my wedding day all over again, because it's all of the things and all of the things that you have to do. And uh, for me, creating that memorable experience is really about the details because Everybody remembers the beautiful stage moments. Everybody remembers the friends that they make, but actually it's the small details, the thoughtful extras, the extra mile that really make the whole experience come together as a complete one and really kind of locks that in as a core memory. And I am big picture, but also very big on the little details. So things like making sure that I give thoughtful gifts to the delegates and, you know, getting branded tote bags and t-shirts and that kind of thing made for the contestants, just the small thoughtful details really build an entire experience so that crown or not at the end of the week, everyone who comes into the system can feel like they left, they leave with more than they came with in terms of experience, friendship, knowledge, skills, whatever that looks like to them. And obviously, you know, we try our best to, to manage the experience of everybody, but what we found is women who come into this experience with a really open mind and a really positive mindset, and they do really maximize it for themselves. So that's really helpful and it makes my job much easier. But those little details, I find they are the things that really cement the memories for people. So that's super important to me. And it's definitely that event background that gave that to me. That's great. And what you said, I love this about it's the attitude and the posture of the woman coming into the experience that can make mm -hmm. or break it for herself. And so open mm -hmm. mindset, not kind of comparing it to other experiences of the past, but truly just letting it be this unique experience. Um, and I really mm -hmm. like how you described that. I haven't heard someone say this before to cement the positive experience. And I'm like, oh yeah, like that's what we all want. We want to have like that good memory of what that season of our life was like and how all of the hard work and all of the dedication and all of the appearances and all of the money raised and the time in service and all of that was celebrated in those moments. And that's such, such a cool thing. I imagine that as a, as a new pageant in a very established industry of pageantry that has historically over time been for the same type of look of person. 
and creating a pageant system, which as you said, 2020, really, I do think our world shifted and it started to open ourselves up to sort of the understanding of others and the, the, the idea that who you are on the surface is not who you are, but that there's so much more depth to a person based on the impact that they have on others. And so I'm curious though, for you, if you would share just what's been the experience about entering the industry with a voluptuous pageant with plus sized women, has it been something that's been welcoming? Have you found a little pushback? Has it been challenging for your contestants? What has it been like for you? I think that in any industry that you come into where you're doing something different, you're going to get that resistance. That's absolutely normal and to be entirely expected. And I know that I've had conversations with title holders where they've said, you know, I'm really struggling to get press coverage for, for example, in those countries or states that aren't typically considered like pageant central focused kind of thing. And I know that they've been receiving kind of a little bit of you know, a little bit of um, obstacles, roadblocks, whatever you want to call them in terms of getting their story out there and getting that press coverage. And they've said, you know, would this be the case if I was, you know, a, a size eight girl, if I was, you know, competing, representing my state or representing my country as a, a straight size pageant girl, would, would I receive this much pushback? And I think it's just when you bring something to the table that's a little bit different, that's a little bit out of the norm, it takes a while for people to kind of get used to that, to come around to it. And and that's always been the case. You know, we're very resistant to change as humans, but for the most part, the pageant community, like you said, it has been changing. And over the years, we found that it's a very positive, very welcoming, very inclusive space, particularly in the UK, it's a very inclusive and welcoming community. And so certainly here and, um, in the States, we found that we only had kind of positive feedback from the people that we've come into contact with. Um, but I think my biggest tip for anybody is if you are doing a pageant, if you're from somewhere that doesn't really understand pageantry and you, you put yourself out there and you're brave enough, and I commend you for that, for being brave enough to put yourself out there and get your story in the press, just don't read the comments because there are there's always going to be someone who has something to say and that's not necessarily a reflection on you or the efforts that you're making or the work that you're putting in so um yes of course there's negativity always but i like to say my kind of pageant mantra is what other people think about me is none of my business so that's that's the little pearl of wisdom that i pass on to others as well yes brilliant and you know that advice is I think something that could be applied to really everybody, I personally read, I, I read the comments I enjoy. And if I know mm -hmm. a comment is going an area that does not support the vision or mission that I'm on, I will just slam the door on it. You know, I feel like those things are not for like just exactly, gosh, you said that so brilliantly. Like that's none of my business. Like what they think of me, that's not my business. So I'm just going to stay out of it. And, mm -hmm. and I like that. And it's as an influencer, as somebody who is, you know, as an influencer, you have to be prepared to share your opinion with others because that's the goal is to help mm -hmm. to influence others for good. And so if you aren't able or willing to do that, then what are we even doing here? Right. You have to be have the thick skin and build the thick skin mm -hmm. in order to do that. I think that that's really, really great wisdom and advice for life, you know, um, that we can all apply really. And I, and I'm glad to hear that it's shifting, that it's starting because you're right. It, change is never easy. And yet somebody must be willing to make it happen for those that go beyond us. And so I think it's so smart of you to say like, yeah, of course we expected that. We knew that that was good. And I'm up for the challenge, you know, because cool. <laughs> it's so worth it. It's such, such a worthy mission. For pageant women that are competing who are curvy, what do you know about um, brands or are there certain websites that you refer your girls to that are places that they can shop? I, I remember when I was shopping and I, I was a skinny little mini I was a size probably zero or two in normal sizes. And then I would walk into a pageant store and I was a six to an eight. So I can't even imagine if I, now I'm an eight in real life. And so I'm like, gosh, what even size, what do they even make that size in pageants and pageants anymore? So I'm curious if you could share a bit about where are some resources that our curvy gals can shop at? 
Absolutely. Uh, we were very fortunate this year to have partnered with Sydney's Closet and Jonathan Kane. And Jonathan Kane has done an incredible line for Sydney's Closet of gowns that are designed for specifically for curvy bodies. And it's like, one size doesn't fit all we know this that is why there are plus size exclusive stores that's why there are plus size exclusive pageants this is a safe space and that shopping experience looks very different for a woman with a curvy body compared to a woman who can walk into your your standard store and pick something off off the rack and take it home so there are retailers out there like sydney's closet like jonathan kane mcdougall do a great line of plus size gowns um I think the beautiful thing is Giovanni, all of those big names, they're all catering now to plus sizes, either in their standard line or with a separate specific line for curvy bodies. But we have found that Jonathan Kane for Sydney's Closet was spectacular. It, it brought the drama, there was the sparkles, there was everything that pageant girls want, regardless of what their body type looks like. And I think the thing that over the years, a lot of retailers seem to have missed is that curvy women want the same shopping experience as their straight size counterparts. We want the same glitz. We want the glam. We want the drama. We don't want to feel like we're being asked to wear something that encourages us to hide ourselves. So, you know, there are lines coming out now that they've got the cutouts of the sides. They've got the slightly more daring necklines. If you, you know, if that's your, if that's your vibe, they've got the side slits. We want all of that. We don't want to feel like there's something that's been made specifically for us to make us feel like we need to hide. I think that having that same experience is the most important part of enabling curvy women to feel included in this community. And there are some amazing retailers that are making those steps to make that happen. And Jonathan Kane and Sydney's Closet, definitely two of them. That's awesome to hear. I love that. And it's incredible to see the progression over the years, you know, that as, as pageants like yours come up, it is truly changing the industry. So I love, love seeing that. Um, so let's chat for a moment about your interview. Um, tell me about what you expect in the interview room. Maybe you could share a bit about what's the time frame, what's the format of it. Um, and, and if it's different at the local, regional and international pageants. Sure. So we tend to give the framework that we we'd like people to know what they what to expect when they're competing at local or national level. So we we try to keep everything as kind of similar as possible. But at international level, we have a panel style interview. It's usually around five minutes. There typically isn't political questions asked because we know how much that varies from country to country, how how much cultural differences can impact those kind of questions and answers. So we tend to ask very heavy kind of personality based questions. There's no, there's never a trick question in pageant interview. I know that a lot of people feel like they have to have the right answer. Um, but what we found is the, the women who thrive in interview are the ones who are authentically themselves, the ones who don't over prepare, the ones who know the direction in, in which they want things to go. And I recommend Alicia for that wholly. Being able to control the interview is exactly what you need to do, but you know, being rehearsed, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna win you those all important votes from the judges. So we love to see the women who are authentically themselves, who are confident, but most importantly, who just show up ready. And a woman who is ready to win just shines differently. She's not better than another contestant. She's not more worthy of the crown. She just shines differently. And you can tell that it's her time. So we do have, uh, like I say, five minutes because we think that's a great amount of time for people to talk, get those kind of first nerves out, settle, relax a little bit. And it's panel style. And I always say, you know, if you can make the judges laugh, you've kind of, you've, you've taken control, you've got the nerves out there. And that's a really positive way to lead things forward. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That's true. And it's, and it is fun. The judges want to enjoy it too. They want to laugh. They want to play. They're, they're having yeah. a great day. So they want to engage with these women that they get to meet. And so Yes, laughter is a beautiful medicine for all. I've got two questions for you from the chat right now. One is about a woman who says she's on the smaller side of plus. Her competition size is like a 10 or 12. So she said she's kind of sometimes caught in between 
systems. Um, what do you recommend for somebody like that who, you know, might, maybe they feel like, I don't really feel like I fit into this system, but I don't really feel like I fit into this system. How might you approach that from your perspective for your pageant? Well, for us, we accept contestants from a US size 10, but I think it's about finding a, a body size or a dress size or a, a, a body shape that feels comfortable and you'll always know what feels comfortable to you because it's when you feel most confident on stage so I think for me it, it comes from feeling the most comfortable in your own body I would never ever recommend that anybody tries to change their body type or change their body shape in a way that is drastic to fit a specific system so shop around find a system that will allow you to be authentically and comfortably yourself and commit to it wholly and you know thing like we've been saying all along things are changing there there isn't the size requirements anymore and if you want to go for a, you know a big name pageant and you haven't seen yourself represented on the stage before why not be the first be the first person to step on the stage in the at, at the size that you are and inspire others to feel comfortable enough to do the same mm. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for saying that. That's another That's question that came up in the chat is, do you think that there will be a day where voluptuous women are able to compete on the same stage in, yes. in not just like as a token oh, that's the one woman who's plus sized on a stage mm -hmm. of all these skinny minis. But do you think that there will be a day where just we're, we'll all be able to compete for things other than body type and the way that we look? What are your thoughts? I would love to see that. I know that changes are happening. We've got incredible representation out there. Emma Loney, who is in Miss Earth at the moment, she's done amazing things for championing, you know, confidence at all size, being valued as a person, regardless of the size of her body. She was incredible on, on stage. She did a great job representing her state. And now she's got a Miss Earth title. And I think that that is really important. And while steps are being made, steps aren't being made fast enough for my liking personally. Do, do we know when we're going to see the day that we'll see you know, a curvier woman on the Miss Universe stage? No, probably not. Um, we don't know. We're not there yet. I hope that we're making steps in the right direction. It's really important to me that we do, but I would love to see a pageant community where we are really focusing on what kind of a role model could this woman be? What kind of message of hope could she bring to the little kids out there who haven't seen people who look like them on stage before, whether it's ethnic background, whether it's body size, whether it's height, whether, you know, any of those things, they're all really important. And I think what we do at Miss Voluptuous is really a small part of that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would, I would actually argue it's a very large part of the change. So thank you for that, Natalie. Um, well, I am just so grateful for you, for your time and willingness to be here with us today from across the world. And, uh, and truly, I just want to take a moment to honor you for the work that you are doing in the pageant industry. You know, this not just having a pageant that's just to kind of check the box, but to do it in a big way way like your pageant is spectacular you know following along just a few months ago when you had your national pageant here in the states and just seeing all of the things that you've been able to do in a short amount of time but because of your background I truly position that you I, I believe that you've been positioned for this role as a leader of this cause and it's incredible for all of the rest of us that get to be able to follow in your footsteps. So thank you for the work that you are doing for our curvy girls out there and for our plus size women that get to have this incredible, incredible experience that is something just for them and that's changing the industry so that there will be a day where we are not overly concerned about size anymore, but rather we are truly just able to be at home in our bodies. So thank you, Natalie, for what you do. I think it's an honor. I genuinely, it's an honor to wake up every day and be able to do what I do and work with the incredible people that I work with, including yourself, obviously. It's 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 a privilege, really it is. So thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to have this platform to talk about what I love. So it's really incredible. Thank you. Yes, my pleasure. It's been awesome, awesome having you on. 
Ladies who want to follow along with Natalie, you can go to her website, which is linked in the description of this. I'll make sure that wherever we publish this video, it is linked so we can make sure that people can get connected to this incredible system to check it out and learn a little bit more if it is something that would be a great fit for them. So thank you again, Natalie. Oh, what a doll. I am just so thrilled that she was able to be here with us today to share all this awesome stuff about her pageant. What a cool system, right? Isn't it awesome? And like, you know what I love about this is that Natalie is not trying to downplay, trying to make it like, ah, we're just gonna like be in the corner. She is showing up with excellence. Like she is like, you know, just loud and proud. And that is what we need more of in the pageant industry. So people don't feel like they're supposed, I love what she described there is like the, you know, which so much truth in this and that the way that plus size clothing was created in the past was as a, oh, here, you're going to hide this and you better hide this and you better hide this. And, you know, you will even see sometimes when you go to stores, they say like, oh, well, this is not, you need to accentuate this part of you, but hide this part of you, you know? And it's like, that's not really what we want to be doing. We want to showcase who you are. And what I love about Natalie is that she really is into the community service piece of the pageant, not because the beautiful part of the pageant is something that she's shying away from, but because she knows that impact isn't made from beauty. Impact is made from the service that you offer the world. That's why I'm excited to be partnering with her as a sponsor. So, so thrilled to have her on here. Thank you girls for listening. 